Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. And today in my this particular video, I am going to discuss one very interesting pipeline with S3 Lambda and DynamoDB. Okay, that is building and maintaining Amazon S3 metadata without surfers. Okay, so metadata nowadays is becoming a very popular concept. Whether you are considering data migration, that is kind of ingestion in ETL framework, or maybe somewhere else. Okay, keeping the track of metadata is very useful for future purpose in debugging case or monitoring etc right so suppose you are working in a big project there are multiple developers present from big data domain they are continuously writing some file in s3 or deleting some files from s3 like that right so those kind of all the log information you want to keep track whatever happening in s3 in a serverless architecture okay that one how you can do i am going to discuss in my this video so the problem statement you can consider like this you, your company is using amazon s3 for file storage using an s3 bucket where all users can put or delete their files when a user upload or deletes file your company requires an entry to be immediately created in a database table okay and that should be serverless so one of the best option is dynamodb right because DynamoDB is serverless, we can easily integrate with S3 Lambda Trigger, right? So we are going to use DynamoDB for this serverless architecture. And the entry should contain the file metadata like file name, creation time, size of the file, bucket name, event, and like this kind of basic information related to metadata, okay? So the architecture will be very simple. So here I am having my S3 bucket. I will be creating triggers for object create event and delete event. And that will trigger lambda as soon as some objects will be created or deleted. And it will be, the lambda will be having the required execution role that is S3 read permission and DynamoDB full access. And that particular metadata information of that particular event, the lambda will be writing in a DynamoDB table. Okay, right. So let's start building the architecture. So I will be going to AWS Management Console and I will be going to IAM here. Okay, and then here I will be going to roles. And I will create one role for this lambda. Okay. So here I will choose lambda. I'll go to next permission. And then here I will give DynamoDB. Okay. Full access. Apart from that, S3 also required. So maybe S3 read only access is also sufficient. And then we have to give CloudWatch also for logging purpose. Right. So here I'll be choosing CloudWatch full access. Okay. I'll go to next tags, next review, okay, lambda, some name I am giving, okay, I'll create this role, right, so here my role is created, now I'll be going back to my AWS management console, I'll be going to S3 and I'll be creating a bucket, okay, so create bucket some name I am giving and I'll create this bucket okay so here my bucket is also created I'll be going to AWS management console I will be going to DynamoDB okay I'll go to create table and here I will be giving the table name maybe S3 metadata server place. Okay. Partition key or primary key I will be giving maybe resource ID, some unique identifier. Okay. Resource ID or maybe let me keep this capital. Okay. Right. And that let it be string only, no issue. And then here I will create the table. Okay. So it is creating with resource ID string. Right. Now here I will be going to AWS Management Console. I will be going to Lambda and I will be creating my code. Author from scratch Lambda Metadata Dynamo. And here it will be Python 3.9, right? Change the default execution role to this one just now what we created, and I will create the function. Okay. 
So our code is very simple. If you see here, what we are doing, first we are importing Boto3. And then for this particular any entry in DynamoDB, we need some unique identifier, right? So I am using this particular Python uh, utility for creating the unique identifier for all different events. And def lambda handler, I am creating S3 client using Boto3. And I am creating DynamoDB resource also using Boto3. And then maybe for multiple records, deletion or creation, one single trigger happened. So for records in event records, okay, we will be iterating. We are extracting bucket name, object key, size, okay. So what I have written for size. So generally inside this particular event of records, inside that S3, inside that objects, we generally have the size key, which will give us the size idea. But suppose something get deleted. That time it will not contain the size, right? So that's why I am using get function of dictionary. So what it will do, if the size key is present, it will return the size, else it will return minus one, which will clearly indicate that uh, basically the object is deleted, okay? And then event name, due to which purpose the event is triggered, whether that is create event or delete event, okay? Event time, when it happened, okay? All these things. And then DynamoDB table, I will be giving the table name just now what I created, right? There is this particular one. I will be copying this particular, no, sorry. Here is my DynamoDB table. I will be copying this particular one. And here I will be pasting that. And then here, once that is created, this already I discussed also in my previous video how to insert the data. So put item function we are using and we, then we will enter the data. So this is our resource ID which is unique identifier kind of. And then here I'll be pasting that. And then here string of that unique identifier, whatever Python is generating, that we are converting to string. That is becoming our primary key or partition key for DynamoDB table. Bucket name, object name, and then size, and then event name and event type. Event type, okay? All this information we are storing, okay? So I'll be selecting whole thing. And here I'll be going to Lambda. I'll be deleting that, I'll be pasting that here, I'll go to deploy, okay? Right, it is deployed. So now we'll go to add trigger, I'll go to S3, okay? So bucket is this particular one. So first one is if object is created, then it should trigger all object create event. I'll acknowledge this and add this one, okay? Right, and then for deletion also, we have to make sure this is happening. So I'll go to S3. And then here bucket same bucket I'll be choosing. And then the event type should be permanently delete. If the object is permanently delete, then we will trigger again. Okay. I'll choose this particular one. I'll add this. Okay. So for either object is created or permanently deleted. Both case lambda will be getting triggered. Right. So that's pretty much it. Now I will go to S3. Okay. I will go to this particular bucket. And here I'll click on upload. I'll add files. Okay. Maybe a true leader, this particular JPG file. Let me upload. Okay. So this uploaded. Let us go to configuration. Sorry, monitor. And then here click on view logs in CloudWatch. Okay. Here this is the CloudWatch logs. And we have got no error, so expectation should be in this particular DynamoDB table, we should be getting entry, right? I'll be going to view items and see how beautifully we are getting. So this is kind of an unique identifier, okay? Then here bucket name. What is the bucket name? This is the bucket where we uploaded, right? Then event type, object created, okay? That is, we have put some data, event time, okay? What is the object name? Okay, a 2 litrjpg and the size, okay? Right, and then here I'll be going back here. I'll be clicking on upload. I'll be adding the files. Maybe I will add two files. One is audit audit.txt. Another one is maybe I'll be choosing here uh check. Okay, check and audit.txt both. Not all these things. Uh check let me do like this. Way. Maybe audit.txt and autosys. And uh, okay, these two things let us upload. Okay, so both are text file. I'll click on upload. Okay, this is done. If I go to DynamoDB, if I refresh this particular page, okay, so see now three entries there, 
all that object creative in and here we are getting the object name also autosys.txt audit.txt a to leader jpg okay so this is the power of this serverless architecture we no need to think about backend only we develop and that is done we can deploy to production okay right maybe the additional feature what you can add that is when some object is deleted then you can send notification to a respective mail id also okay using acs simple email service okay right now let's test whether the delete also working or not so i'll be choosing two files and i'll click on delete okay and then here i'll be using this permanently delete concept and i'll be deleting this object okay right it is deleted let us go back to dynamo db let us refresh this particular page and see many entries came okay see two more entries object remove deleted object remove deleted okay what are the objects remove audit dot text and the two leader dot jpg and size as they are deleted that's why it is showing minus one minus one right that's why in the lambda code i have specified like this way that is if this particular size key is not present you are returning minus one because when some object is deleted the particular uh, dictionary as part of the event trigger don't contain the size key okay so if, if it does not contain we'll be putting minus one and that way we can easily understand whether the object is deleted or not from the dynamo db also right so this is how you can build this kind of beautiful architecture maybe if you want you can add some more uh, dynamo db attributes in your dynamo db table right so this is how you can capture the metadata information of an s3 object whether that is created or deleted right without surfer it is complete surferless architecture self managed thing okay auto scaling all these things will be there with this surfaces right so this is all for my this video i'll be posting the code in the description box if you want you can refer that and if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos thank you